Welcome back to another video on our Active Directory Lab. I know we've neglected this for a little bit here. Um, this is going to be a rundown for you guys following along at home, you guys setting up your own lab environment, which I definitely encourage everyone to do if you want to get more um, experience with Active Directory and uh, pen testing on internal Windows networks. Um, now, in a video very early next week, I will be actually using this stuff that I'm setting up here and... We're finally going to be at a point where we can do some, uh, you know, move towards doing some attacks. We'll be doing some reconnaissance on the AD network uh, using so a tool called Bloodhound, right? Now, the thing about Bloodhound is in order to use it, the first thing that you need to do is we need to collect some data so that we can uh, import it into Bloodhound. Now, I had made a video in the past on Bloodhound, I do believe. And basically what it does is it allows you to see graphically um, the mapping of the entire Active Directory uh, network. So all the users, all the groups, and what the relationships are uh, amongst each other. And this is going to be really key because another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to intentionally configure a vulnerability into the Active Directory configuration. So I'm going to have... Maybe I'll have a user that is part of domain admins and part of this other lower level group. And we can, uh, you know, say it's like a service account or something like that. We might be able to grab the hash uh, using Sharphound, the collector here. And if we, if we can get something like that, then we can get into that service account and it's also part of domain admins, then we have domain admin access, right? So we can play around with some different misconfigurations in Active Directory. But the first thing we need to do, for you guys following along at home, is to download both Sharphound and Bloodhound. Now, Bloodhound, you can have that on, a, uh, on your Kali box if you want, or on a Linux box. I actually have it on, on my Kali box at the moment as well. So the nice thing about when you do run Bloodhound, it doesn't you don't have to be on that network, right? So you're just importing the findings in. So I can, you know, import this into Bloodhound on my Kali box that's not even on the same network as the domain controller, and that's completely fine because we're just importing in these JSON files that Sharphound is gonna generate for us. Now Sharphound is the collecting uh, collector tool that's meant to be used with uh, Bloodhound. So what you do is you can download um, either the source or what I did was just download the pre-compiled binary. It's just easier that way. Just download this exe here. And then you can just run it with... Um, you can just run Sharphound just straight up. Uh, yeah, just like this. And it'll automatically determine what domain the current user belongs to. So I would download this on a Windows box on the domain because uh, you want to be on the same domain in order to uh, get the proper data here that you want. And you can just use the default collection method, I believe. Should be fine. And these are the things that it's going to be grabbing. Um, it's going to be looking at the security group memberships, domain trust, abusable rights on Active Directory objects, group policy links, the OU tree structure, several properties from computer group user objects, and SQL admin links. And this will make more sense when we actually import the findings into Bloodhound because you'll see all these things uh, visually um, with a nice interface that you can actually click around and look around at. Now, in our example here, we don't have too much going on here. Let me log into the domain controller really quick so I can show you guys what we're dealing with here. So for this, uh, these are the only members of our domain, the domain users, right? We got this test user here, which I have on another, I'm logged in on another machine. And uh, let me let's see, we have the administrator account, this default account here, which I believe I did uh, set up a vulnerability with this default account. I made it a domain administrator, I believe. You have some IIS admin accounts as well, and then the uh, ticket granting ticket service account, which I'm maybe I, let's see. If I look at domain admins members, 
Uh, okay, just the administrator at the moment. So I can play around with adding some accounts to that that shouldn't be a part of that, right? And I could just do that within here, Active Directory Users and Computers. Now, like I said in a future video, I will be uh, diving in on how to do all this stuff in PowerShell as well for you guys that are interested in that. Um, but for right now, we're going to do everything the graphical interface way. So it's really as simple as that to collect it. You just run it on the network. Now, um, we should be able to do this as that test user that's a part of the domain. So if I come over here, we've got this test user account. And it is a member of the domain. And so I should be able to download it on here. Now, one caveat is uh, the file transfer. You, you can either try to download it on your main system and transfer it over here. Or if you do download it on this box, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go into your virtual box um, settings. And you're going to have to change it from internal to like a natted something that can uh, reach the internet because we're on this internal network here. You're not going to be able to get to the internet to actually download Sharpound. So it's kind of up to you. If you do want to download it on this box, then you're going to have to change that, download it, and come back. Um, but um, then you won't be able to connect to the domain, so we won't be able to log into this user, and that's kind of the tricky part. So what I'm probably thinking is the better way to do it is just download it on some other system, just get the file somehow, right? And then just transfer it over to here, um, like either drag and drop or by creating a share folder uh, within within like the machine itself, you can have um, a shared folder. That, that's probably going to be the go-to way now that I'm actually thinking about it. <clears throat> that way we can actually be logged into the test user account and transfer it there, right, and not some other account. So if we, uh, if we do that, then uh, we should be good to go. Now... Um, we should be able to run it from this test user account and get the data we need. If not, then we can try running it from the domain controller, but I want to avoid doing that if possible, because in a real world scenario, uh, we wouldn't already have access to the domain controller to the domain admin account, right? Uh, cause that might be part of what we're trying. That's most likely going to be part of what we're trying to do, right? Is escalating the domain admin. That is basically the highest level. That is basically the equivalent to rooting a system when it comes to active directory. If you can take over a domain admin account, you can do whatever you want on the network. You pretty much have free reign at that point. Now down the line, if you guys want to get a little bit ahead of the curve here, what I'm going to need to do is I will need to uh, connect a Linux box to this internal network and get it to where it can communicate with these systems here on the network because I'm going to want to make use of the impacket, the Python impacket tools uh, from Kali. Now, yeah, it's true. I can run those impacket scripts uh, on, on Windows as well. So I could just do it on my attack box over here and, uh, get it that way, but I'd like to incorporate Kali Linux in the testing to show you guys how you can be on a Linux system and, you know, try and compromise a Windows network, Windows computers, things like that, right? So I will be needing to join my Kali Linux box to the, uh, to the network so that I can use tools like Impacket and things like that, right? So that's pretty much the overview, and uh, in a video really soon, uh, in this coming week, I will be actually showing you guys how to use these tools, Sharp Hound and Blood Hound. Uh, they're not too difficult to set up, really, and these guides here will tell you everything you need to know. These, the documentation is pretty solid. I mean, there's not much to Sharp Hound, obviously. Uh, Blood Hound can be slightly tricky to get set up properly because you got to install Neo4j, which is like a database that this uses, and you got to set that up, make sure it's running. Um, but... The documentation covers it quite well, I would say. And like I said, Budhound, you could just have this installed on your Kali box. Um, you don't have to install it on the Windows box, although you could if you wanted to. It's really up to you. And uh, yeah, so I will see you guys over in those videos on the screen right now if you want to catch up on this series so far. We haven't done too much at this point, but if you want to follow along as I recommend, definitely uh, check out the videos and just... Uh, 
do what I do and you can get things set up properly. If there's anything I kind of glossed over and you don't really understand, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll get that answer for you as well. Be sure to subscribe and like if you haven't already also. So I'll see you in those videos. Thanks for watching.